So welcome everyone. I'm so excited to be talking to you today. This is the Holistic Mystic Show. My name is Boston Summer. I am a shamanic healer. I am a spiritual life coach and I am a business mentor for empaths and healers and coaches who are looking to um, share their gifts with the world and make an income doing it. So today we're talking about money. So who's excited? Let me know in the comments. If you're watching live, let me say hello. Let me see you in the comments. If you're watching the replay, let me uh, drop a hashtag replay and we're going to jump into it. So how are you doing? I would love to know where you're at on your journey with money because money is essential to everything that we do in life. We need money. And to think that we don't is clearly absurd. Um, and I think it's often money often gets this like holier than thou energy when it comes to the spiritual community. Like I shouldn't have to think about money or it, it's selfish or it's um, coming from ego to want and desire money. And that's just not true. So first of all, let me back up a little bit. This week we're talking about energy hygiene for your relationship with money. So I have had all my own personal experiences with learning about money and I definitely had to learn the hard way. Um, my upbringing was really, really one on one end of the spectrum and the other. It was both kind of a scarcity mindset. However, um, growing up with my mother, it was, you know, we had a broken down car all the time. And when I, um, my mom, um, last custody of me, I lived with my grandma after I was in foster care and I watched my grandma work two jobs. She put everything on credit. And so it, it was, it was really two conflicting things. And, um, my mom, you know, relied on, uh, other people in her life to help support her. And my grandma went out there and like, we did everything she could to make money. And so it's really been these conflicting sides of money. And so, I come from the space of not wanting to put myself in those positions, kind of gearing more towards the side of my grandma where I, you know, really tried everything I could to control money, right? I did what I had to do. I've worked 60 hours weeks for, I don't even remember since I was like 18, 17 or 18 between school and working a part-time job and putting myself through cosmetology school. Um, I did everything that I needed to do to make sure I had what I had. And I also worked like a part-time job with my uncle mowing lawns and cleaning dirty houses. Cause he has a real estate business and it it's really just been from this space of like, I know I can support myself, but like to what extent, right? Like I tried worrying myself to death about money and I stayed up late micromanaging my budget. And so my journey with money has really been a long and complicated one. And let me know in the comments if you can relate to that. If you're hyper micromanaging like me, kind of geared more towards the end of side of that, or maybe you're more loosey-goosey and just kind of hope everything works out. And so it wasn't really until I started viewing money as a friend and a helping hand that... I could uh, really change my relationship with money, right? I began breathing life into my thoughts and my feelings about money. And I had to shift my perspective around money, right? I started viewing money as a friend and a um, someone that was there for me, just like any of my spirit guides would be, right? And so this ultimately led me to being able to trust that she would be there for me whenever I needed her. I began to talk to her, I began to have money dates with her. I began to thank her on every bill that I had. And, you know, when I start, I started to look around me, at everything I had, everything I owned, all the food in my fridge, um, the roof over my head, just even the simple little things that I was being provided for 
showed me that she was there for me right and even when I was in the my worst financial positions I've ever been at the end of the day money was there for me she was there for me so I'd love to know in the comments what is your relationship with money and I'm gonna bring out the comments here just give me a second Okay. Beautiful. So hi, I see you guys on here. In my opinion, as conscious and enlightened people, I believe it's our responsibility to transmute this energy of money from it being a burden to a gift. And us as, you know, conscious and enlightened or people or people who are woke, as I like to say, we're still a very small population or percentage of the population. And so honestly, if you think about it, who better to have the money than people who want to do good with it. And so in this perspective of like, I know that we are going to do good things. We're going to, you know, help people who need money. Um, we should be the ones and the population that should be in control of the money. And so in order to do this, though, we have to clear out this ick mentality around money and really switch our perspective as from money as an object to money as an energy of love, of wholeness, fulfillment, joy, and unlimited abundance, right? One of my affirmations I like to say is um, money is, an, a ha or am abundance is an unlimited wellspring of, of, sorry, money is an unlimited wellspring of abundance. Uh, I believe that's the energy of the owl. And it's really us who prevent us from having it. So, how do we switch your perspective and begin to clear out these blocks that we have in our energy field? So the first thing that we really need to make sure that we're doing is becoming aware, right? What are your current hangups with money? I'd love to know in the chat. Um, how often do you look at your bank account? Are you a micromanager like I am or have definitely been in the past? Or do you have no clue what your bank account looks like that looks like right now? And it's important to know these things to be aware because if we if we don't know the current situation, there's nothing we can do to fix it. And then we stay in that victim mentality of, oh, I don't know why money's never working out for me. Um, she's never there for me, he or she, whichever pronoun you want to use or they. And then once we become aware of our actual financial state of, without judgment, right? Become just becoming aware of where we're at. The next step we get to look at is how we view money. So like I said, when I switch my perspective of money is a helpful friend. It changed everything for me, right? Because how many times have you caught yourself talking shit about money, right? Saying she's unreliable, saying that she's never there for you. Have you done this? Or have you caught yourself saying these words, right? Like saying, I can't because I don't have enough money, right? That, that is a scarcity mindset and it doesn't mean that we need to lie to ourselves, right? We just need to be honest with where we're at. However, our words create our reality, our thoughts create our reality. And so would you be friends with money or would you be friends with money if she talked that way to you? Saying that I can't trust her, talking crap about her. Would you be honestly friends with money if, if you were coming from that, if money was coming to that space to you? And the invitation here is what if 
you started treating money with love and respect. What if you started to breathe life into your friendship with money? How would it change for you? If our thoughts create our reality, if our feelings create our physical manifested manifested reality, which has been proven through science that this is the case, by switching our perspective on what we actually have, everything that is good in our life and instead of focusing on the gap of what we want it's so insane because money will just automatically start coming into your life money in the forms of free things or you found something in the back of a cabinet that you didn't know you had like I recently been needing to reorder um flea and heartworm for my cat but I have to take him to the vet first and um I just, I don't know, I've just not been wanting to do that. And so I keep putting it off, keep putting it off. And then I'm, when I was looking through the box of my cat stuff, I found an unopened box of this uh, flea and heartworm medicine that my vet gives us for three months. I have three applications. And so now I can, you know, put the money I would have used towards taking my cat to the vet to get more. Um, towards, you know, paying off debt. And then in three months, you know, I can, I can do it then. And so if you just take a second to look around, you know, all the blessings that come in your life, maybe someone offers to buy you lunch or um, someone drops some, something off at your house. I've had, you know, in the past where I wasn't in a good financial place when I just started my business, I had someone drop off boxes of food at my house. And I was able to, my husband and I were able to eat, even though he was working two jobs and I was, you know, working crazy hours, starting my business. It's just, you know, the life of an entrepreneur sometimes. And so money is all about being in a vibrational match. So it's literally just how worthy you feel of receiving money. You make it up. You get to choose right here, right now, how worthy you feel of receiving it. And when you feel worthy, you start asking for it, right? You start demanding from the universe, this is what I need. And so that's like the energetic spiritual side. But the other aspect here is being, you know, we have the 5D spiritual aspect, but also how do we navigate the 3D when we're still in the space of wanting to manifest the money that we need? And so the first thing you have to absolutely do is create a budget. When you create a budget, this avoid helps you to avoid overwhelm. You start to understand income, the money coming in versus what's going out. And it's important that we know what this is so we know how to spend, right? When we become aware of how much we have, it's simple financial literacy, which a lot of people are not taught. Um, when we know everything we're spending it on, all of a sudden we don't get random charges that put us, you know, a negative in our bank account because we know when it's coming out, how much it's going to be. And we can plan in the right, in the right way for us to be able to, um, cover all of our basic needs. The other thing about paying bills is when we are, you know, The money is coming in. We're being blessed with this energy of money. And in order for the energy to keep going, it's important for us to understand that we can't hold on to it tightly. When we hold on to it tightly, that's a control energy and it's going to stifle our ability to receive more. So money is meant to be in flow, in motion. And so I love to say and think about, oh, you know, if I have to spend money, I'm helping to keep this energy of money going, this flow of energy, and I'm just recirculating the money. It's not that like I'm, I have to pay all these bills. In my opinion, I get to keep this energy of this money going and because money wants to flow. She's a free spirit. And so when we let money go freely, then she comes back to us freely. But when we want to hold on to money, 
then we stifle that and then we stifle it from coming back to us. Does this make sense? Let me know in the comments if this is, if this is landing for you. So one really thing, good thing that you can do um, when you are paying your bills, when you're buying things that you need or want, I, it's important that we bless the money. When we bless the money, it's really special because we get to alchemize the energy right? So when money comes into our field as conscious and awakened people, then we get to transmute this energy. Like, like I said at the beginning from a burden, from scarcity to light and, and healing and abundance and joy and hope for others who are going to be receiving the money next. So bless the money, bless the people that pay you, bless them tenfold. I always do this whenever I receive money in my business. Um, the, another good thing to keep in mind when we're, ma when we're making a budget, when we're sticking to our budget is to be grateful for everything that is coming in. Right. So I have a practice at my altar that I like to do every month. And I literally just do it with sticky notes and I write down all my bills and I say, thank you. Like as if they are already paid. So I'll say, thank you for the money and the resources to pay for food this month. And I try not to, um, uh, limit myself to just money because resources, right. I like free stuff. I like discounts. I like, um, however, you know, people pay people paying for me. And so, um, I like to keep this energy of open to resources as well. So I'll do that with my bills, my rent, my electricity, all my utilities. And I have, you know, I go through a lot of sticky notes, but I like to put them on my wall and I'll just bless them, say thank you. And then once the bill is paid, I will write thank you on that sticky note and put it into a jar. And then I like to burn these, these notes in a, a new moon or full moon ritual when the jar gets full. And so um, that's a daily practice or a weekly practice that I like to do, have these money dates with money. Um, so that's one of the things I like to do. Another really important thing to think about when it comes to having good energy hygiene with money, right, um, is raising your money IQ. So your actual um, financial literacy, when it comes to knowing how to, how to do a budget, how to invest, right? How to um, make good decisions when, when thinking about going on trips, right? Is this something that you can actually afford? Or are you going to put it all in credit? How to use credit cards in your advantage, right? To make money back. These are all things that we can think about um, in growing our money IQ. So read books, take classes, work with practitioners and coaches that will help you keep accountable and keep your vibration high mindset, your mindset, when it comes to sticking to these goals of wherever, whatever you are ha um, having and working with, with money, especially if you're an entrepreneur is crucial, right? So really, really understanding, you know, where is our nervous system at when it comes to thinking about money? Do you shrink up? Do you tighten up? Or, or do you feel expansive? right? When we feel expansive, then we welcome more abundance, more opportunities, more joy into our lives. But when we're closing up, we prevent it from coming to us. So self-soothe as you expand. And when you meet your edge of what you think is possible for you, be nice to yourself, get in your pleasure, right? Make sure your sacral chakra is open. Lots and lots and lots of orgasm. Orgasms are a biohack to flushing cortisol, which is the stress hormone out of the body. And the more we become comfortable with receiving money, when we can make, you know, $10,000 seem like $2,000, or maybe it's not that big of a jump for you, but maybe it's just a little jump for you. That is how we grow our capacity to receive and, and hold money and, and keep that new normal going in our lives. So 
just like our tools and the way we tend to our spirituality daily, the energy of our money um, relationship can drastically improve our lives. And so it's important to think about your relationship with money. I have on my calendar every Friday, I have a money date and I, it's, it's time I take away from my busy life to sit on my altar, to tend to the sticky note, um, the habit a uh, ritual. I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a ritual, the sticky note ritual, and just spend time with money. How do I feel? Where am I, am I in a different space than I was last week? Right? If am I in a fight or flight right now? And when we are aware, right, then we can do something about it. But when we try to walk through life, when um, we let our energy field get muddied up and all this fear stuck in our field, then we close off to being able to receive. So I trust that this served you. If you still feel lost and you want some personalized help and how to work through these money blocks, book a clarity call with me. We will pinpoint your top three blocks and create an action plan then and there to help you to slingshot forward into your next level of success, growth, your goals, right? Um, sitting down and learning how to create a budget, sitting down and learning, you know, where is your energy at when it comes to money? Where are your blocks? What are you holding into your field? Maybe it's something from the past that is preventing you from moving forward. Um, there's so many things. What is your mindset and what are some mindset tools that you can start to implement to get into that space of being able to receive. And sometimes it's literally a willingness to be accountable and to stick to a plan. So if you're interested in a booking a clarity call with me, drop a heart emoji in the comments and I will personally Facebook message you and I will reach out to you, um, if this is on, if you're watching this on YouTube, I will message you and we will get that set up so that you can start to experience the wealth that is available to you. But it starts on this energetic spiritual level, building that relationship with money and then bringing it into the tangible, the 3D, doing the, the 3D steps as well. So um, once again, thank you for watching. I will see you next time on the Holistic Mystic Show. My name is Boston. Until then, go out there and share your light with the world. Namaste.